Unfortunately, wolf hunting prospers even nowadays, claiming lives of these surprising animals. However, the hunters do not touch wolves with a white mark. Why? You'll learn it now. In this edition, I'll tell you about an interesting story about the wolves with a white mark and share the most interesting and unusual facts about wolves. Here's a story to begin with. It happened in a family consisting of three people and a dog. One day, a fire broke out. As a result, only a woman and her black dog with a white fleck survived. Because of this incident, the woman came apart psychologically. To recover herself, she asked the local administration to employ her as a forester. Soon after that, the woman moved to a booth in the forest together with her dog. She adapted to her new life, forgetting the tragedy, and did the forester's job. The dog got used to the new environment as well. At some point, she started to leave the booth for a long time and stay in the forest. One day, the dog came back home with a bitch wolf that decided to stay in the new family. It was not reckless and did not assault people. That's why the woman didn't chase it away. On the contrary, she built another booth for the dog and the female wolf. However, the wolf didn't accept her in her micro pack. Each time the woman approached the booth, it started to roar and show its teeth. Sometime later, the woman went to the booth accompanied by the dog and saw that the wolf lay on the floor and could hardly breathe. Obviously, it felt very bad. It did neither roar nor show any aggression. It didn't have enough strength. The woman didn't expect that would happen. The wolf gave birth to several cubs. They all had such white marks as their father did. The black dog. Unfortunately, the happiness didn't last long. A month later, a bear attacked the family. The dog, defending the wolf, the cubs, and the hostess perished. The grieving woman buried it not far away and stayed with the wolf that accepted her to its pack and considered a hostess. One day, a member of the local administration decided to come to the house to visit the woman and look at how things were going. Suddenly, a bitch wolf went to the road. As the man was about to pull out a weapon and defend himself, he found it was a woman's pet. He turned out to have heard about its existence. The wolf showed the necessity to hurry up and enter the house. The man found that something had happened to the woman. It was true. As soon as he arrived, he saw the woman was dead. After its death, the wolf went away to the forest together with its cubs. Three years later, the animal also died. Its body was found on the dog's grave. The cubs grew up and became pack's leaders. The local resident heard the story and knew why those leaders had white flecks on their bodies. In an homage to the woman, the wolf, and the black dog, the hunters agreed that they would never touch or kill the wolves with white marks. As for the wolves with unique flecks, they never assaulted people or cattle and didn't let other wolves from their packs do that. This way, they showed their respect and loyalty to people. What do you think about this story? Did you like it? I'm not certain if it's 100% true or partially spruced up. Anyway, I believe that could have happened in reality. Wolves are very loyal creatures. Now you'll check it out for yourselves. What's more, you'll learn many other interesting facts about the wolves. Follow us, it'll be exciting. The wolves belong to the canines as well as the dogs. What do we know about the dogs? They are, of course, very emotional. They perceive and demonstrate a wide range of emotions and show an incredible affection. The wolves do the same but on a higher level as well as in captivity. Everybody knows the wolves live in packs. A pack is a big family where they appreciate one another. Anyway, I'll tell you about that later. Now I want to mention that the wolves develop the strongest attachment to their partners. The wolves are among a few monogamic animals on the planet. They choose a partner once and forever. Another partner may be chosen only if the previous partner dies. What's more, the partner serves not exclusively for mating, literally this is a social cell, but in the world of animals. The male does not play away to its bitch, brings the prey to the family, and actively participates in the upbringing of the cubs. In reality, the small wolves are brought up by all members of the pack. After all, it's the future of the pack. That's why it's the benefit of the adult wolves to raise the strong youth, being up for the challenge. Concerning the couples themselves, the male and female wolves show very tender sentiments. They care for each other, nuzzling, licking, and slightly biting. In the mating season, they can even temporarily leave the pack to stay together. Pack Concerning a wolf pack, it's a whole family, as I told earlier. 
it can count from 3 to 40 specimens, including both the families with their cubs as well as the lonely wolves joining the pack. As well as other families, the wolf's pack has its own rules and laws. The head of the pack, the leader, is responsible for all of them. It institutes ranks in the pack, solves habitat, hunting, and defense problems. The leader must care for all the rest. There are warriors in a wolf pack. This is the main strength of the pack. Those who are busy with hunting and protecting a big family against the predators. The older of the warriors is the main applicant for the throne. It's exactly the one who will become the head of the pack in case of a death or a serious illness of the current leader. There are also mothers in a pack. It's absolutely clear. Their main task is to bring up the cubs. A pack also includes the guardians helping with their training. There are also young male and female wolves. They belong to neither warriors nor mothers. That's why they look after the cubs and learn the ropes of the adult life. The newly arrived wolves play the role of aunts and uncles. They look after the cubs. At last, there are also small wolves as well as the sick. The pack helps the sick and wounded, caring for them until the very end. They dispose of those mentioned above only if there's no alternative. This way, the wolves prevent dangerous diseases from spreading and have an influence on the strong integrity of the pack. For this reason, by the way, the wolves are considered as forest sanitarians. What's interesting, animals in a wolf pack are divided not only according to the roles but characters as well. Each wolf has its own character. They're careful, self-confident, and defiant specimens. Some feel relaxed and easy within their own pack. They're exactly those who can pretend for the title of a pack leader among the warriors. The others prefer to stay in the shadow of their more active brethren. Assaults Now let's talk about the hunt and assaults. That's what the wolves are famous for. Anyway, they are predators. The wolves are omnivorous, so they can eat whatever they like, something they find in the nature. There are no problems with the vegetation, where it's abundant, of course. Concerning their hunting habits, the wolves can do that both in their pack and as loners. That depends on the size of the prey. Small creatures can be caught by one wolf. However, when the prey is large, a group of buffaloes, for example, the whole pack intervenes. To be more exact, the warriors. By the way, it's not obligatory that the prey is near the wolves to attack it, as well as the dogs they smell perfectly, even better than our pets do. A wolf can smell at a kilometer and a half and even more. 200 million olfactory receptor cells do their job. The wolves have 20 times more of them than humans. What about us people? It's known that the wolves are very dangerous and we need to avoid them. Okay. All in all, this is exactly that way. However, it concerns any wild predators that are dangerous to some extent. The wolves are not that dangerous, as many consider. In reality, people cause them a lot of stress. It's scientifically proven. That's why they're afraid of humans, or at least try not to engage in conflicts with them. They simply don't need that. Many wolves stay away from humans, but if they find themselves in the vicinity, they can just go by without paying any attention to them. The wolves can assault people in several cases. Firstly, it happens when people pose a threat to their cubs. Secondly, when the wolves experience hungry times. Thirdly, they have rabies. A rabid wolf is the most dangerous. It can approach a person and attack the one without any reasons. Rabies makes animals very aggressive. In return, the disease is deadly when certain symptoms are proven. That's why it's necessary to stay away from the rabid wolves and to defend yourself when they attack. Strength It's a difficult task to protect yourself against a healthy wolf. These animals are very strong and smart. Their biting force is more powerful than many fight dogs and even some bears show. The wolves can run fast, developing their speed up to 30 to 37 miles per hour at times. They're also extremely endurable. While hunting, they can cover up to 30 miles. Throughout the night, they can overcome up to 50 miles. With respect to the distance, the wolves can go from one another while hunting or running away from the stronger predators. It's necessary for them to communicate somehow. That's where their yawl comes into play. In reality, the wolves do not yawl at the moon in contrast to how it's considered. They just lift their head up to let the sound spread better. At night, you get the impression as if the wolf turned into a wolf men and raged against our natural satellite. By means of their yawl, the wolves transmit important information at a distance of up to 10 miles. For example, concerning their location. This way, they can also warn about a danger. The yawl can help them to unite with their pack find unaccounted members of the pack or protect the territory. 
The wolves also use their body to communicate with others, including eye contact, mimics, and posture. These noiseless channels can be useful while hunting. For example, a definite look can help the wolves coordinate in packs, not producing any sounds that could frighten the prey. Powerful sense of smell plays a big role in their communication, allowing them to exchange the information by using several types of scent marking. Let's come over to remote relatives of the wolves, the dogs, namely to the rarest breeds that you surely didn't know. Norwegian Lundehund Let's not start with Great Britain or Latin America, but the land of the Vikings. The Norwegian Lundehund is from here. To be more precise, these dogs are from the Lofoten Islands in Norway. This breed is considered not only one of the rarest, but also one of the oldest in the world. They were looked after by the ancient Scandinavians and Vikings. Dogs helped them in many ways. In particular, they were catching Atlantic puffins on the steep cliffs. Hence, the name of the breed comes from that, as it's translated the hunter of puffins. In the past, these dogs were very common in Scandinavia, but over time their population began to decline. The reason was the bird hunt. Atlantic puffins began to be caught by people themselves, and the Norwegian Lundehunds were not needed. Breeders are trying to save the population, but the prognosis is disappointing. There are literally a couple of thousand Norwegian Lundehunds left in the world. Otterhound Otterhounds are much like their distant Norwegian congeners. Like the Norwegian Lundehunds, otterhounds have always been regarded as tough hunters. However, they didn't catch Atlantic puffins, but otters. The difference between them is that the situation with otterhounds is even worse. There are only about a thousand of them left in the world, so their breed is considered endangered. The otterhound was bred in Britain in the 19th century. Having strong sense of smell, otterhounds aided and abetted humans by catching otters. In this way, otterhounds protected the fishing industry because otters are predatory creatures that are very fond of fish. Everything was well until 1978 when England passed a law banning otter hunting. As it happened with the Norwegian Lundehunds, otterhounds were no longer needed and their population declined dramatically. Lochen. What would a hybrid between a lion and a dog look like? Maybe something like this? Lochins have a very memorable appearance. A lion's haircut, small size, graceful and aristocratic features. These dogs have it all. Not surprisingly, centuries ago, lochins were the pets of the nobility, who went to balls with them and posed for portraits. Even nowadays, lochins are suitable for any socialite who likes to go out there and mingle, but only a few of these dogs are left. At the end of the 19th century, they were considered almost extinct, and in the middle of the 20th century, the lion dog was listed in the Guinness Book of Records as the rarest. The trend continues to this day. At the moment, less than a hundred lochins are born each year around the world. As you can imagine, this is extremely low for normal reproduction, but lochins are still holding out. The Zolo Itzquinto is the name of the following dog breed. It's a good thing that it has another name, Zolo, because the full name is a jawbreaker. Perhaps some of you have already guessed from the name that these dogs are of the Aztecs. And not only them, the Aztec Empire existed in the 14th to 16th century AD, while Zolos were running around Latin America long before that. It's believed that the breed appeared in what is now Mexico around 5000 BC. Thus, the Zolo is one of the oldest breeds in the world, and many scientists are certain that these Mexicans are the most ancient. They were once considered guides to the netherworld and some people believe they could cure diseases in one night. Nowadays, Zolos are treated like real jewels. Not only are they still old-timers, but they're also very rare dogs. It's a great fortune to encounter a Zolo. Thai Ridgeback And here's another old-timer. The Thai Ridgeback is the national breed of Thailand and the pride of this country. Sinologists consider these dogs to be one of the oldest on the planet. And if in the case of origin of the Zolo, at least some versions can be put forward, everything is more complicated in the case of the Thai Ridgeback. Scientists still do not know when did these dogs appear and from whom they exactly originated. In Thailand and other countries of Southeast Asia, Thai Ridgebacks are quite common, but outside of this region there are practically none, making this breed extremely rare. 
To make you understand, outside of Southeast Asia, there are only about a thousand of these dogs. And in the US, the Thai Ridgeback appeared only in 1994, only 28 years ago. And this is given such a long history of the breed. It's a shame that these dogs are not so common because they're considered great pets. Thai Ridgebacks are independent, very easy to handle in everyday life, good defenders and just great friends. Moody Once again we have the ancient dogs. The prototypes of the Hungarian Moody breed dates back to the Middle Ages, when Moody like dogs grazed herds. At the time, the Moody was quite a popular breed in Hungary, where they were valued for a wide range of cool qualities. Moody's are excellent guards, companion dogs, rescue dogs, and most importantly, excellent pets. Hungarians are proud of the Moody, but outside Hungary, the Moody is a little-known dog. Like the Thai Ridgeback, it's a local breed which is extremely rare outside its homeland. And that's a pity because the Moody is a very beautiful and unusual dog that, among other things, can boast a memorable appearance. When talking about rare dogs, we shouldn't think only about breeds. Even individuals can be considered rare and unique due to their qualities and peculiarities. For example, what about a dog which was over 2 meters tall? Isn't it rare? Or what about a dog worth $2 million? <laughs> They're extremely rare too. It's worth finding out about them. Stay tuned because there's more to come. The Biggest Dog How big do you think a pet dog can be? If you can't imagine it, take a look at Zeus, and it all makes sense. Zeus was the largest domestic dog in the world. The world record holder of the Great Dane breed was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records on October 4, 2011. Even from the pictures, you can see that Zeus was just gigantic. But the numbers are even more striking. Zeus was almost 112 centimeters tall and weighed 70 kilograms. But the most amazing thing is that when Zeus stood on its hind legs, it was 223 centimeters tall. If it could play basketball, it would be a champion. Zeus's owners had a hard time. They gave the dog about 15 kilos of food every day to keep the giant in shape and drove Zeus around in a truck. It just didn't fit in the sedan. Unfortunately, the record breaker is no longer with us. It passed away in 2014 at the age of five. And here is the exact opposite, the smallest dog in the world. This of course is the Chihuahua. Ordinary close-up photos of this dog named Miracle Millie do not give a complete picture of its size. But if Millie is photographed in front of different objects, it becomes clear how tiny it is. You can literally carry Millie in your jacket pocket because it's only 10 centimeters tall and weighs about half a kilo. Even as an adult, Millie is very tiny, and as a puppy it was even smaller than a smartphone. Even though the owners love Millie, they admit that it's not easy with it. When walking, it often gets lost in the low grass. By the way, Millie is interesting not only because of its size, it's the most cloned dog in the world. Scientists from South Korea created 49 genetically identical copies of Millie to understand why it's so tiny. I understand scientists. Such rare and unique dogs are hard to be found. Considering Millie's tiny size, its unusualness and record-breaking status, I think it's worth a lot. Clearly, the owners won't sell it, but still. But what about dogs for sale? Which one is the most expensive? Tibetan Mastiffs are the undisputed record holders in this regard. Even ordinary puppies are very expensive, and the super record-breaking ones even more so. They literally cost a fortune. In 2011, the media was stunned by the news of the purchase of a Tibetan Mastiff named Big Splash. One and a half million dollars. That's how much one Chinese tycoon gave for the dog. By the way, the fact that the Tibetan Mastiff was bought by a Chinese man makes sense. In China, these dogs are considered a symbol of luxury, like luxury sports cars and diamond watches in Western countries. Big Splash surprised everyone, but even such an incredible record was broken. In 2014, the record was renewed. A one-year-old Tibetan Mastiff puppy went under the hammer for $2 million. The purchase was again made by a Chinese rich man. I wouldn't even be surprised if in a few years we hear about the purchase of a Tibetan Mastiff for three, five, or ten million greenbacks. I'm sure there are many cat lovers among you. That's why we look at these fluffy animals. What's more, these surprising and courageous creatures are even more dangerous than they seem to be. 
small feral cats have to deal with many predators that hunt on them and their kittens. For example, this cat, hiding in a burrow with its kittens, encountered a huge Komodo dragon, the largest lizard on the planet. The tragedy was avoided. The cat was helped by an eyewitness who chased the lizard away. But not everyone needs help. This cat can deal with any lizard itself, which it proved in practice. Scientists saw an unnamed individual in Australia in 2020 when a large wild cat was carrying a large sand lizard in its teeth. Scientists noticed the cat after it had dealt with the reptile. It's not often that you see cats catch such large prey, so that the unnamed stray cat could be called the most dangerous cat in the world. Well, the bravest one for sure. Black-footed cat And with this cat, there's no doubt at all. The vast majority of scientists and experts call it the most dangerous cat in the world. Moreover, it carries the eerie title of the deadliest cat on the planet. And note, this is a small wild cat, not some powerful tiger, big lion, or aggressive leopard. How so? The black-footed cat is indeed small. These South African predators weigh only about 4.5 pounds and reach 20 inches in length, just like regular house cats. Only unlike domestic pets, the black-footed cat is incredibly bloodthirsty. Each night, it kills up to 14 animals. Its hunting success rate reaches 60%. This is the highest rate among all wild cats. For comparison, this rate is about 20% for lions and only about 5% for tigers. The reason is that the black-footed cat hunts practically continuously. Because to support its life, it needs to consume at least 8 ounces of food a day, which is a sixth of its weight. These cats eat mostly small rodents, some birds, reptiles, and invertebrates. But it also happens that black-footed cats hunt on hares and even on antelopes. Except that they don't attack snakes. Sand Cat But this predator still attacks creeping monsters. The black-footed cat's neighbor on the mainland lives in the hot desert. It can also be found in the deserts of Central Asia and the Arabian Peninsula. The size of the sand cat is about the same as the black-footed cat. It's also related to it by its developed hunting instincts. These creatures fearlessly deal with dangerous snakes like vipers. Also, this cat can devour a dangerous spider, lizard, or bird. In fact, the diet of this cat includes almost any creatures it can find. This cat is not friendly in captivity either. It will hiss at other animals, including big and dangerous ones. Speaking of danger, in the wild it's better not to approach a sand cat, though it's small but extremely aggressive. The desert predator is capable of inflicting serious injury to humans because even tigers would envy the sharpness of its teeth and claws. Palace's Cat Next, we have one of the most unusual and recognizable cats on the planet. Each of you has probably heard of the Palace's Cat. It's also called the Mantle. It looks like a sullen but very cute lump, consisting entirely of thick fur. One would like to pet such a cat. But if you try to do it, the palace's cat will open its mouth and everything will fall into its place. This cat boasts some of the scariest fangs among all feline representatives. They look like sharpened daggers. Poor people who had a chance to see this furious wild cat alive cannot be envied. The mantle is merciless to people as well as to animals. It can engage in a fight even with its congeners. What's interesting, unlike many other small and even big wild cats, it's impossible to tame a palace's cat. No way at all. Even a tiger or a leopard can become a pet. But a palace's cat can never become a pet. It's all about special instincts and apparently a constant sullenness. Jaguarundi If you cross a cougar and a jaguar and reduce the resulting hybrid by several times, you'll get the jaguarundi. It's another wild and untamable cat known for its danger. It lives in South America, where it shares the land with its bigger relative, the jaguar. Although the jaguar is much bigger and more dangerous, an encounter with a jaguarundi also doesn't bode well. Most likely, this cat won't kill a human, but serious injuries will be guaranteed. Luckily, these cats don't hunt on humans on purpose. They're busy doing other things, tracking down small animals living in South American forests and eating them. As a dessert, they like fruit and herbs, though in small quantities. Let's return to Africa. There's another dangerous-tailed predator here, the African golden cat. 
It's the closest relative of the carousel and the serval. The African golden cat lives in the forests of West and Central Africa. The animal is large enough, it's twice the size of an ordinary domestic cat, and weighs about 33 pounds. Its appearance is magnificent. It has a flexible body and varies in color from saturated red to red-brown. But despite its external beauty, inside it's a very dangerous creature that can attack even a monkey. It can also deal with rodents, birds, and even small antelopes. What's interesting, the African golden cat hunts not only on the ground but also in the trees. It also poses a danger to humans, including in captivity. There, these cats behave extremely aggressively. The peculiarity of the animal is that it rushes at humans without warning. When attacking, this predator strikes with its tail like a ton of bricks. Jeffrey's Cat At first glance, the Jeffrey's Cat seems to be a cute creature. In terms of size, it corresponds to a domestic cat. It doesn't have a formidable appearance and in general gives the impression of a harmless creature. But the impression is deceptive. In fact, it's a very formidable and dangerous predator equipped with strong and sharp claws. The Jeffrey's cat has perfectly developed hearing and vision, so it can spot its prey even if it's far behind its back. The prey, by the way, can be any reptile – hare, rodent, bird, or fish. Speaking of the latter, this predator is often called the fishing cat because, unlike most feline representatives, the Jeffrey's cat loves to swim and swims very well. In general, there's nowhere to hide from this cat. However, this doesn't prevent many daredevils to have it as an exotic pet. Hi. I did not know that they like to swim so much. Yeah, it's hot out here. And what about classic house cats? While not as bloodthirsty as their wild relatives, there are plenty of dangerous creatures among them too. Forewarned is forearmed. So keep watching to learn about unsafe cat breeds that not everyone would dare to have in their homes. Savannah Cat Let's start with the breed which actually cannot be called a classic. First of all, the Savannah is a hybrid cat breed. It results from a cross between a wild African serval and a domestic cat. Secondly, the Savannah is the most expensive cat breed in the world. Purebred individuals can cost tens of thousands of dollars, so not everyone can have such a pet. But those rich people who are going to get a savanna should know that this cat is not the most harmless, calm, and affectionate. After all, semi-wild blood makes itself felt. Like its wild African relatives, the savanna loves activity, so it needs a lot of space. Otherwise, the cat may become violent. This won't be good. The savanna's height is more than 20 inches and its weight's up to 33 pounds, so it will be unpleasant to catch a stray fist. Look at the powerful slaps this predator gives. This is not a soft paw strike from an ordinary house cat. However, the savanna is a tameable and trainable cat. If you pay attention to it, everything will be fine, and it will be a very good pet, causing envy and admiration. Abyssinian Cat Next up is the cat, which is also of African origin. The Abyssinian Cat was bred on the basis of Aboriginal cat breeds of East Africa and Southeast Asia. By the way, it's one of the oldest cat breeds on the planet. Apparently, old age had done its work, and Abyss, like many old people, became vicious. Joking aside, the Abyssinian Cat must be very carefully trained, otherwise it will quickly become feral and violent. This breed is considered one of the most vindictive in the world. By accidentally hurting an Abyssinian cat just once, you run the risk of getting the worst enemy. However, the Abyssinian cat can attack the owner for no reason, even if they didn't hurt the cat. That's why cats of this breed are generally recognized as one of the most dangerous, even in spite of their advantages and a long history. Mekong Bobtail and lastly, another vicious cat from the feline world. The Mekong bobtail, or the Thai bobtail, is a breed of short-haired and short-tailed cats. At first glance, it might seem that these bobtails are really nice and kind cats, but this is misleading. The ancestors of Mekong bobtails are Siamese cats, which are not distinguished by an ideal temperament, and this was reflected in Mekong bobtails. Many people call these cats secretive, dangerous, independent, and vengeful. In addition, Mekong bobtails have a low boiling point, so they can attack even during a harmless game. 
In addition, Mekong bobtails have a low boiling point, so they can attack even during a harmless game. In addition, they don't trust strangers, so almost any guest can become a real enemy for the Mekong bobtail during their visit. However, as always, if the Mekong bobtail is carefully trained and given enough attention, things can be smoothed over. The same applies to the other domestic cats I told you about today. That's all, guys. Tell everyone in the comments about your favorite cat breed. Thank you for watching and see you later.